Yes, good morning everyone. A yeah, very good morning. Shall we begin the session? Yeah, today's topic is a transaction management. In the last class we have finished with the relational databases. Yes, that includes the tuples, that includes attributes, degree, cardinality. Now the today's Yes, today's topic is a transaction management and includes how the yes, how the management of the transactions, how we consider the transactions, how we manage them, that is the transaction management. So shall, yeah, shall we start? All right. So wait for two minutes more. Let's begin with the first part. So first Yes, first criteria is a transaction. So a transaction is a collection of the operation that performs some operations that perform some function in database applications. So whenever we perform any operations, whenever we perform any any, any calculations, operation that performs a single physiological unit that is in a database application. And each transaction is a unit of both atomicity and the consistency. <laughs> that means whenever we are taking the requirement that atomicity will be corrected for the execution of the fund transfer that preserves the consistency that means the correctness upon the execution of the fund transfer and each transaction is a unit of the atomicity or both the atomicity and the consistency that means both the values are determined over here and each value will be determined with the execution of a transaction so whenever we execute the transaction or whenever a user executes a transaction that is performed with the database users so if a database were consistent when the transaction started, so database will be consistent in the sense when the transaction was successful terminated with the execution of the transaction. It may be necessary to be inconsistent in case of the debit of the A or the credit of the B that must be done before the other. That means, yes, that means, yes, that means whenever the debit will be done, so, yes, there, there will always be a credit. And this temporary inconsistency, although necessary, may lead to difficulty if the failure occurs. Now, if a programmer's responsibility to define the various transactions so that it preserves the consistency of the database. Therefore, programs are not the transactions, programs are not the case with the recovery management, with the responsibility of the data that recovers with the uh, that recovers with the database system, that re recovers with the recovery manager. And each program by itself does not perform the database from the consistent state to the new consistent state. Whenever the database ensures the uh, atomicity and the durability properties, it is the responsibility of the database system itself that is of the recovery manager. And in the absence of the failures, all the transactions complete successfully and the atomicity is achieved easily. Without any failure, without any So a transaction may not always complete its execution successfully. And if we are to ensure the atomicity properly, so a failed transaction must have no effect on the state of the database. Therefore, the database must be restored to the state in which it before the transaction is started. That means at the starting phase when the transaction has started, it can restore to that place with the help of the failure recovery. And finally, last stage is to update the database concurrently that is no longer preserved with the concurrency control manager to control the interaction among the concurrent transactions to ensure the consistency of the database. And the transaction manager consists of the concurrency control manager and the recovery manager. And the concept of transaction have been applied in the database system and the applications also with the financial applications, in the real-time application, in telecommunication as well as in the management of the long duration activities that may be of the product design that may be of the admin workflows now the next part is the database architecture that means what is the structure of the architecture or what is the sorry what is the structure of the database or what is the architecture of the database that provides a 
component of the database system and also the connections among them. And whenever we are talking about the architecture of a database system that is greatly influenced by the underlying computer system on which the database system runs. And database system can be centralized or the client server where the one server machine executes on the multiple machines. That means there is only one server that, yes, that follows or that we can say that is applicable to all the clients. And database systems are can be designed to exploit the parallel computer architecture. And distributed database also span the multiple geographical separated machines. Most users of the database system today are not present at the site of the database systems, but connect to it through a network. We are therefore differentiated between the client machine on which the remote database user works and the server machine on which the database system runs. So there's a remote machine, there's a server machines. And database applications are usually partitioned into two or three tiers. One is a users, that is end users, then application program, then system tools or the utilities, that may be a compiler, that may be a linker, that may be application program object code, and at last there is a disk storage. So it is divided into this, this is a users, then query processor, then storage manager, then disk storage. So the system structures. Now this is a client that is a user and the application then there is a network that is connected with the server that may be a database system that may be application server or the database system. Yes the main difference in these uh, just listen the main difference in these are the one is the two tire architecture one is the three tire architecture. Two tire includes only the user and the database system three architecture includes user application application server as well as the database system that is a three tier architecture is the additional or the new one concept is application server and the next part is the data mining and the information retrieval that refers closely to the process of the semi automatically analyzing large databases to find the useful patterns and like the knowledge discovery in the artificial intelligence that is also a machine learning or the yes or the analysis part so data mining attempt to discover the rules and the pattern or the revelation from the data that is uh, in simple terms we say about the data mining is knowledge discovery in the databases knowledge discovery in the sense Yes, discover or uh, more and more knowledge will be graphed in a database from the database or we can say. And sometimes types of the knowledge discovered from a database can be represented by a set of the rules also. And this is one of the example of the rule that stated informally that is a young woman will annual income greater than $5,000 are most likely people to buy with the smooth sports cars. There are two concepts that is used over here. One is the data warehouse, one is the information retrieval with the diverse data, with the companies, with the multiple resources. Now the next part is the specialty databases that is several application areas require the special databases for the database system for their users uses that are limited by the restriction of the relational data model and as a result researchers have developed several data models to deal with these application domains including the object based data models and the semi structured data models. So first is the object based data model that includes a software development methodology. So this leads to the object oriented data model that can be seen as an extended ER model with the notions of the encapsulations method object entities and inheritance object entity and encapsulation that is the data hiding with the method to provide an interface to objects that is among the key concept of the object oriented programming.
that have found the applications in the data modeling. And the object-oriented data model also supports a rich type data type, including the structured and the collection types. And that is used with the object-oriented data model that were developed. And the major database vendors present supports the object relation data model that is a data model that combines the features of the object oriented data model and the relational data model it extends a traditional relational data model with a variety of with the structured and the collection types such as object orientation then semi structured that permits the specification of data where the individual data items of the same type may have different set of the attributes this is in contrast with the data models that is mentioned earlier with every data model or where every data of the items of a particular type must have a same set of the attributes that is used with the XML language that was designed as a way of adding the markup information to text messages to the text document but has special or but has uh, become important because of the applications in the data exchange. And XML also provides a way to represent the data that have nested structure that provides a greater responsibility in structuring the data that is important for the certain type of the non-traditional data also that provides XML language different way of expressing the queries on data that is represented in the XML and transforming the XML from one form to the another. Next part is the database users and the administrators. So our primary goal is to retrieve the information from and store the new information in the database. And there are four different types of database system users that are differentiated. They expect to interact with the system and different types of the user interfaces have been designed for the different types of the users. One is a native user that are the unsophisticated users who interact with the system by invoking one of the application programs that have been written previously. For example, when you talk about the clerk in a university who needs to add new instructor to a department that will use a program that is a new hire. And this program asks the clerk for the name of the new instructor's new ID name of the department that is A for example and their salary. And with another example consider a student who during uh, the class registration period wishes to register for a class by using the web interface and such a user connects to the web application program that runs at a web server. And the application first verifies the identity of the users, allows her to access a form where she enters the desired application. That is sent back to the web application at the server, which then determines if there is Zoom in the class, and if so, add the student information to the class store in the database. The next one is the application programmers that are the computer professionals who wrote or who write the application programs that can choose from any tools to develop user interfaces and this, these or red are the tools that enables an application programmer to construct forms and reports with minimum programming efforts. That means uh, predefined drag and drop tools are available with the application programmers to construct the forms and the reports with minimum programming efforts. Then sophisticated users that interact with the system without writing the program, instead they form their requests either using the database query language or by using the tools such as the data analysis software. An analyst to submit the queries to explore the data in the database falls in this category. The next one is the specialized users that are also the sophisticated users who write the specialized database applications that do not fit into the traditional data processing framework. And among these applications, there are the computer aided design system, knowledge based system, expert system that can store the data with the complex data type. Next part is the role of the DBA. So 
a person who has central control over the system is known as a DBA, that is the database administration. And the function to the DBA includes schema definition, that includes the storage structure and the access method definition. The next one is the schema and the physical organization modification. Then granting of the authorization for the data access by using the different types of the authorization database admin that can regulate which part of the database where various users can access. Then the routine maintenance. Example includes the maintenance activities that are the periodically backing up the database either onto the tapes or onto the remote servers to prevent the loss of the data in case of the disaster such as the flooding and ensure that there are the enough free disk space is available for the normal operations.